Logical equivalence. We say that two statements are logically equivalent if they have the same truth table. We use the symbol with three horizontal lines to indicate logical equivalence. Let's look at an example. Let P be a propositional variable. Let's show that P and not not P are logically equivalent. Symbolically, we write P is logically equivalent to not not P. The logical equivalence of P and not not P is called the law of double negation. We will show that P and not not P have the same truth table. We can put all the information into a single table. Since there's just one propositional variable, P, we will need just two truth assignments, true and false. We will also need columns for not P and not not P. We get the truth values in the column for not P by taking the opposite truth values in the column for P. So true becomes false and false becomes true. Similarly, we get the truth values in the column for not not P by taking the opposite truth values in the column for not P. So false becomes true and true becomes false. Now observe that the columns corresponding to P and not not P have exactly the same truth values. So those two statements have the same truth tables. In words, the law of double negation says that if you negate a propositional variable twice, the resulting statement is logically equivalent to the original propositional variable. As an example in English, let P be the statement, John is hungry. Then the statement not not P can be expressed in English as it is not the case that John is not hungry. By the law of double negation, these two statements are logically equivalent. Let's try an exercise. The law of the conditional is the logical equivalence, P implies Q is logically equivalent to not P or Q. Use a truth table to verify this logical equivalence. Now's a good time to pause the video and try to write out the truth table yourself. You could then resume the video and check it with the truth table that I'm going to display in just a moment. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to write out a truth table yourself. And here's my truth table. Notice that since there are two propositional variables, P and Q, we have four truth assignments, true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. The next column, P implies Q, we get from the truth table for the implication, true, false, true, true. The not P column, we get from the truth table of negation. We just take the opposite truth value to each truth value in the P column. True becomes false, true becomes false, false becomes true, and false becomes true. And finally, the last column, not P or Q, we use the columns corresponding to not P and to Q and the truth table for the disjunction. False or true is true. False or false is false. True or true is true. True or false is true. Notice that the columns corresponding to P implies Q and not P or Q have exactly the same truth values. This verifies the given logical equivalence. The law of the conditional allows us to replace the conditional statement P implies Q by the more intuitive statement not P or Q. Recall that we can think of the conditional statement P implies Q as having the hypothesis P and the conclusion Q. The disjunctive form not P or Q tells us quite explicitly that a conditional statement is true precisely if the hypothesis P is false or the conclusion Q is true or both. Consider the conditional statement P implies Q. There are three other statements associated with this statement. The converse is the statement Q implies P. The inverse is the statement not P implies not Q. The contrapositive is the statement not Q implies not P. Let's look at an example. 
Consider the conditional statement, if you are a cat, then you are a mammal. The converse is the statement, if you are a mammal, then you are a cat. The inverse is the statement, if you are not a cat, then you are not a mammal. The contrapositive is the statement, if you are not a mammal, then you are not a cat. If we let P be the statement, you are a cat, and Q the statement, you are a mammal, then the original conditional statement can be written as P implies Q. The converse can be written as Q implies P. The inverse can be written as not P implies not Q. And the contrapositive can be written as not Q implies not P. Notice that the conditional statement is true. If you are a cat, then in fact, you are a mammal. The converse, however, is false. If you are a mammal, then you're not necessarily a cat. For example, a dog is a mammal. You could be a mammal and you could be a dog. The inverse is also false. If you are not a cat, for example, maybe a dog, then you could be a mammal. And the contrapositive is true. If you are not a mammal, then you are certainly not a cat. In fact, the conditional statement is always logically equivalent to its contrapositive. As an exercise, let's show that the law of the contrapositive, the logical equivalence P implies Q, is logically equivalent to not Q implies not P, always holds. Use a truth table to verify this logical equivalence. Okay, once again, it's a good time to pause the video try to verify this logical equivalence using a truth table yourself, then resume the video to check it with my truth table. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance now to write out your own truth table. And here's my truth table. Once again, there are two propositional variables, P and Q. So there are four truth assignments, true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. And you may want to Pause the video once again, just to look over this truth table carefully, compare it with your own, and make sure you understand where all the columns are coming from. Notice that the columns corresponding to P implies Q and not Q implies not P have exactly the same truth values showing the given logical equivalence. The De Morgan's laws provide formulas for negating a conjunction and for negating a disjunction. The first De Morgan's law is the negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to not P or not Q. The second De Morgan's law is the negation of P or Q is logically equivalent to not P and not Q. As an example, let's verify the first De Morgan's law. We'll do it two different ways. Okay, so we're going to show that not P and Q and not P or not Q are logically equivalent. First, we'll use a direct method. By a direct method, that means we're going to show that all possible truth assignments lead to the same result for the two given statements. If P is false or Q is false, then the negation of P and Q is not false, which is true. And not P or not Q is also true because not P is true or not Q is true. On the other hand, if P is true and Q is true, then the negation of P and Q is not true, which is false. And not P or not Q is false or false, which is also false. So all four possible truth assignments of P and Q lead to the same truth value for the negation of P and Q and not P or not Q. Notice that the first computation we did, setting P false or Q false, actually took care of three truth assignments, false, true, true, false, and false, false. We did all three of those simultaneously. And then all that was left to check was the case where both P and Q were true. Okay, so in any case, it follows that the negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to not P or not Q. Let's also do the truth table method 
in case the direct method was a little too difficult for you right now. Here is a truth table solution. You may want to pause the video and look at this truth table carefully so that you could see where all the columns come from and all the truth values come from. And notice that the last two columns correspond to the statements not P and Q and not P or not Q. And all the truth values in those two columns are identical. Okay, as an exercise, go ahead and use a truth table to verify the second de Morgan's law. The negation of P or Q is logically equivalent to not P and not Q. Once again, pause the video now, write out this truth table yourself, then resume the video and check it against mine. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to write out your own truth table. Here's mine. Pause the video one more time and check carefully my truth table against yours and make sure that if you do have any mistakes, you see where they came from and you understand that the last two columns show that the two given statements are logically equivalent to each other. Okay. I want to now give a list of some useful logical equivalences. You should verify each of these by drawing a truth table or by using a direct argument. And notice that some of them we've already verified. The first one is the law of double negation, which says that P is logically equivalent to not not P. We have already verified this one. Next, we have the two de Morgan's laws. The negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to not P or not Q, as well as the negation of P or Q is logically equivalent to not P and not Q. Once again, we've verified these two laws already. Then we have the commutative laws. P and Q is logically equivalent to Q and P, and P or Q is logically equivalent to Q or P. We have two associative laws, P and Q and R, is logically equivalent to P N Q and R. P or Q or R is logically equivalent to P or Q or R. Then there are two distributive laws. P and Q or R is logically equivalent to P and Q or P and R. P or Q and R is logically equivalent to P or Q and P or R. We have four identity laws. P and true is logically equivalent to P. P and false is logically equivalent to false. P or true is logically equivalent to true. P or false is logically equivalent to P. We have two negation laws. P and not P is logically equivalent to false. P or not P is logically equivalent to true. Then there are two redundancy laws. P and P is logically equivalent to P. P or P is logically equivalent to P. There are two absorption laws. These are perhaps the most uh, misleading or non-intuitive. P or Q and P is logically equivalent to P. P and Q or P is logically equivalent to P. Notice how the Q gets absorbed between the two P's and it turns into a P. We have the law of the conditional, which we have already verified. P implies Q is logically equivalent to not P or Q. We have the law of the contrapositive, which we have also already verified. P implies Q is logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. And finally, we have the law of the biconditional, which says that P if and only if Q is logically equivalent to P implies Q and Q implies P. Let's do an example. Let's show that the statement P and P and not Q or Q is logically equivalent to the atomic statement P. What we're gonna do is start with the first statement and use the given laws from the list to step-by-step -step simplify this statement until we get down to the atomic statement P. So starting with P and, P and not Q or Q, we first use a commutative law to interchange P and not Q with Q. We then use a distributive law to rewrite Q or P and not Q as Q or P and Q or not Q. We then use a negation law 
to rewrite Q or not Q as true. Then use an identity law to rewrite Q or P and true as Q or P. We then use a commutative law to interchange the P with the Q or P. We'll then use another commutative law to interchange Q with the P. And finally, we use an absorption law to rewrite P or Q and P as P. For practice, let's try this exercise. Show that the statement not P or Q and P or Q is logically equivalent to Q. Once again, you should pause the video now and try to do something similar to what we did in the last example to show that these two statements are logically equivalent. Not P or Q and P or Q. Using a commutative law, we could interchange the not P or Q with the P. We could then use a distributive law to rewrite PN not P or Q as PN not P or PN Q. We then use a negation law to rewrite PN not P as false. We could then use a commutative law to interchange the faults with the PN Q. Then an identity law to rewrite PN Q or faults as PN Q a commutative law again to interchange the P and the Q, and finally an absorption law to rewrite Q and P or Q as Q.